Hello everyone, Dr. Kofi here again and welcome to Tutor Med, where everything medicine is simplified. In these past few days, we've been having clinical case discussions in all the various disciplines and so far, we've discussed one case each in all four disciplines. In today's video, we will have our second case discussion in internal medicine. Kindly support us by liking and sharing this video and subscribing to our channel if you have not done that yet. Alright guys, let's get started. Very good. And so let's look at our clinical case. Kindly note that these cases are sample questions from the Ghana Medical and Dental Council. For our clinical case, we have a 17-year-old who was brought to your consulting room with a long-standing anemia of HB 9.4 gram per deciliter. He was asymptomatic. Now, there were four questions for this clinical case. The first is, what three questions will you ask in the history? A few seconds to think through this question. Very good. And so for this clinical case, the relevant information here include the fact that he is a 17-year-old male. And then he came with a long-standing anemia, an HB of 9.4. And then the next relevant information is that he was asymptomatic. And so the three questions we will ask in this case is one or R1. Is there any history of seasonal or recurrent bone pain? The second question we would want to ask, is there a history of jaundice? The third question, is there a family history of sickle cell disease? However, there are a lot of questions we can ask and then we will explore them in the subsequent slide. Very good. And so let's see how to generate the relevant questions to ask in the history. First, let's remind ourselves of the patient's demography. He's a 17-year-old. And then we are told he came with a long-standing anemia. Now, this statement, long-standing, indicates that it's a chronic disease. And so the key to answering question one is to find the causes of chronic anemia. And then the causes include sickle cell disease, chronic kidney disease, anemia due to a chronic blood loss like a bleeding peptic ulcer, and then anemia from a hematological malignancy like leukemia. All these are causes of chronic anemia. And so the point here is that the patient's anemia is from a long-standing pathology. And so for sickle cell anemia, the questions that can be asked include the answers I have already given. Is there a history of a seasonal or recurrent bone pain, which may indicate vaso-occlusive crisis? Is there a history of jaundice? Is there a family history of sickle cell disease? In addition to these three questions, we can also ask for a history of cola-like urine, which might indicate or point out to a hyperhemolytic crisis, we can ask of any history of swelling in the hands and feet during infancy or early childhood. That can point to dactylitis, which is a common presentation for sickle cell during infancy or early childhood. And then regarding chronic kidney disease, we can ask of early morning facial puffiness. We can ask of a history of frothy urine. Is there any history of hematuria? Is there any medical history of hypertension? We can ask that. Remember that secondary hypertension, one of the most common causes is a renal pathology. Is there any family history of polycystic kidney disease? We can ask that in the history. And then for anemia due to chronic blood loss, like a bleeding PUD, we can ask for epigastric pain, vomiting, hematemesis, and said abuse or melanic stools, any history of melanic stools. And for the hematological malignancy like leukemia, 
we can ask for any easy bruising which might point to thrombocytopenia any recurrent fevers we can point to leukemia etc now the second question says give four differential diagnosis now remember these diagnoses should be chronic conditions and so please do not be tempted to write malaria and so as listed earlier the four differentials include sickle cell anemia the second differential we have chronic kidney disease complicated by anemia the third differential we have iron deficiency anemia from a chronic blood loss in this case likely to be a bleeding PUD and then a fourth differential can be leukemia other differentials may be chronic malnutrition I mean he is chronically malnourished it could be chronic liver disease we can also consider recurrent hemolysis in a patient with GCSPD deficiency. We can consider HIV and AIDS as well. Then the third question says, what three investigations will you request for in this patient? Now one of the investigations you request for is the full blood count. This investigation is very important here although the hb has already been given when the report comes the first thing to check is the other cell lines i mean the white cell and the platelet count to see whether they are also reduced if they are then we have a case of pancytopenia to deal with but if they are normal indicating an isolated anemia we look at the rest cell indices mcv and mchc because they will narrow the differential diagnosis. Now to understand the full blood count interpretation more, kindly use the link above to watch our full blood count video. The link is also available in the video description below. Other investigations include HB electrophoresis to know whether there is sickle cell anemia and if there is what is sorry sickle cell disease if there is what is the genotype then we can do blood urea electrolytes and creatinine for the suspected ckd we can do an abdominal ultrasound looking for a renal sorry sonographic features of ckd it can also tell if there is polycystic kidney disease then based on the bue creatinine if the renal function is not good we can do a urine re to find evidence of renal damage we can do ion studies if the breast cell indices point to ion deficiency anemia. We can do reticulocyte counts and then we can do peripheral from comment, all depending on what we find in the previous investigations. Then the last question says, what are the types of anemia with laboratory investigation? Now per the labs, we have three types of anemia we can have microcytic hypochromic anemia where we have a low mcv and a low mchc mcv stands for mean cell volume mchc stands for mean cell hemoglobin concentration then the next type is a normocytic normochromic anemia where we have a normal mcv and then a normal mchc then the third and the last type is macrocytic anemia where we have a high MCV and so all these investigations I mean how to interpret the full blood count have been explained in our full blood count lecture and so kindly find the link in the video description below and have a look at it and so thank you for watching this episode kindly support the channel by liking and then sharing the video subscribe if you have not done that yet bye
Thank you.